AVAX, the native token on the Avalanche protocol created by Ava Labs, shooting up 30% over the past week leading up to Avalanche Summit, the community's conference in Barcelona. Note to viewers, I will be participating on a couple of panels at Avalanche Summit. If you're around, hit me up. All right, joining us now with more is Ava Labs founder and CEO, Emin Nun Sierra. Welcome, Emin. Thank you for joining us. So in addition to the price rise, we've seen an increase in AVAX unique wallet addresses to over 2 million. Total lock value is holding steady at around 11 billion compared to other chains that are currently experiencing a lot of volatility. So what's behind this recent growth? Uh, Caitlin, thank you very much for having me. Um, we've seen in the uh, in uh, the 15, 16 months that Avalanche has been out, uh, a tremendous growth. Uh, not only have we had enormous growth in the number of users, we have over 2 million users now, but we've seen hockey stick growth in monthly active wallets. Uh, we've seen uh, an enormous amount of value and total value locked. What's behind this is just uh, the, tech the kind of technology that many other projects strive for that Avalanche has delivered reliably. We have delivered through a, a superior consensus protocol, very high uh, transactions per second and very, very low time to finality. So much so that interacting with the chain feels almost like interacting with this website. And in addition to that, we have the subnets that uh, allow us to, uh, to accommodate many different use cases on top of our uh, platform. So those two facts combined, uh, along with all so sorts of partnerships we've had with blue chip uh, dApps and, uh, and applications, DeFi applications, have given us tremendous growth. And we're now poised for uh, growth in the GameFi space. Yeah, so, actually, we uh, have uh, a... a image right now that we're showing of the subnets out there. You know, when you talk about it, it's kind of confusing without the visuals, but I understand Avalanche's goal is to tokenize all assets. And earlier this month, the Avalanche Foundation announced a multiverse incentive fund of 4 million AVAX tokens. That's now worth about 350 million in today's prices to incubate these subnets, uh, which are those application specific blockchains on Avalanche that are supposed to scale the protocol horizontally. So what are the big projects that are building subnets and what will be the first killer use cases? Well, there are, there are quite a few actually. So uh, one of the first things that we are, I'm really excited about are DeFi applications that currently uh, are experiencing high fees uh, that are moving to their own subnets. So we've seen, for example, that AMMs are very successful, but they, they unfortunately are plagued by high slippage for their users. And uh, we haven't seen central limit order books, decentralized exchanges that are actually kind of like the markets we all know. They haven't taken off on regular blockchains. They consume too much gas. So some of our DeFi applications that consume a lot of gas, we would like to move uh, to their own subnets. Prime among these is Dexalot, which is a central limit order book application, uh, very familiar to, to your uh, listeners and audiences from TradFi. Another example is games. We have Krabada, which is a very, very popular game. Uh, it's unfortunately consuming a lot of gas on chain and creates a lot of load. And that's a perfect example of the kind of thing we would like to move to a different subnet where it's isolated from the price action on the main network. And there it can have its own token, be used for all sorts of other things. And uh, it can also be isolated and its impact on the other DeFi applications is minimized. And there are many other cases like this. We're also building in a very different space a partnership with Deloitte, where uh, Deloitte is actually using its own subnet for keeping track of uh, emergency of FEMA aftermath disbursements. So post, uh, post -national, national emergency disbursements to people, they would like to keep track of what's being paid to whom, but they want to do it without having to pay fees on the main network. So, and I could, I could have many other examples in between, anything and everything that is, uh, that would like to isolate itself from activity on chain, that would like to use its own tokens for things other than, uh, you know, whatever the servicing the, the main chain would be fantastic to support on a subnet. So, good. You, you know, you have this very active community now, as Christine was saying, uh, just growing on Avalanche. And, as, and uh, obviously, you were very active, of course, in, in Ethereum uh, prior to starting Avalanche. How much of that overlap do you have there in, in the community in Avalanche and Ethereum? How, how much of that are people that you've taken out of uh, Ethereum, if you will, and, and gone to Avalanche? Or, or is there still a lot of overlap? 
Uh, there is some overlap, of course. I, I myself am an overlapped person. I started out from Ethereum, as you mentioned now. Uh, I'm working as exclusively on top of Avalanche because it's so much nicer, faster, and cheaper. Um, but I would say that we've added to the overall community. So blue chip uh, DeFi applications that we all know from Ethereum are now bigger and better uh, because of Avalanche's presence. I think the overall EVM community has prospered. And people who have learned Solidity now have multiple venues on which they can deploy their applications. And the sum total value that we've created as a space is larger because we are here. So I don't think that we are in, in any shape or form carving out the same set of users. I think we're adding to this, the general pool of users. And if you ask me what's going to happen in the next five to 10 years, is tremendous growth. And we need platforms that can absorb that growth. And Avalanche is chief among them. So, of course, everyone's in Barcelona right now uh, for this event. What are they there for specifically? And, and is it different than what you expected? Are, are, are people interested in aspects of Avalanche that you're seeing in, uh, when you're physically there, when you're physically seeing these people in person uh, compared to what you thought they would be interested in? Is, is, there, is, there, is there a topic or an application or something where you said, wow, you know, that, I didn't expect that to be so big here? That's a great question. So overall, this is kind of like a festival atmosphere over here, and there's a giant celebration going on. Uh, Avalanche was born mostly during the pandemic. We did not actually get together. This is our emoji. It's the first time our community is meeting each other in real life. And it's an amazing, amazing event. So um, I am humbled by the activity. We're sold out. Um, the entire platform, the entire event is sponsored, and there's so much commercial interest in uh, building things on top of Avalanche. This is the very first time that the community is getting to know each other, and I'm seeing a lot of interest from areas that I did not expect. One of them is, and we all know that DeFi is very strong on Avalanche, but an area that I did not realize was growing tremendously with a very deep pipeline is GameFi. And GameFi is, uh, is, is, is huge, and subnets appeal to games that want to isolate themselves from activity on chain. Um, there's another area, the sort of Web3 applications to expand, but have not been able to do so because of gas concerns, are now able to deploy on top of subnets. So the multiverse initiative that Caitlin mentioned has brought out everybody who has a use case but has concerns about overlap with other chains or has concerns about load. So uh, overall, as I said, there's a, there's a giant festival atmosphere and uh, we're all thrilled to see each other. We're all thrilled to meet each other. It's been a fantastic event. Let's zoom out for a moment just about the larger prospects for DeFi in general, um, particularly in the U.S. So, you know, as you know, there was just an executive order uh, that was released. And I'm just curious what you think are the prospects for regulating DeFi. Do you see this as something that um, are you optimistic about this or do you see a potential tightening in the future? Just since, since you're so involved in this world, I'd love to hear your just outlook on the regulatory prospects. I cannot wait for regulatory clarity. And I speak for every DeFi founder, I think, uh, because I've spoken to all of them. I'm, you know, I'm obviously a platform founder, but, uh, but every single DeFi founder I have spoken to uh, says that they're, they're desperately in, in need of better clarity from the regulators. They need bright line rules for how to proceed. We've shown to the world that these assets are very different and they can provide built-in rules into the fabric that allay the regulators' concerns. Things that the regulators are used to enforcing post facto, we can build into our, our infrastructure. And so that is a huge, uh, you know, huge, huge uh, position to be in. Now, of course, uh, we do need that there are legitimate concerns still around stable coins. There are legitimate concerns about securities, et cetera. Uh, but but the, the sooner the regulators can achieve clarity on that front, the sooner the area is going to explode. So I am I'm super bullish about regulatory clarity. I am not concerned about uh, uh, regulatory uh, you know, uh, concerns killing off the area. I think we are big enough now uh, that, um, that the regulators will have to work with us and will have to accommodate uh, the, the activity that's going on. I think the regulators themselves are, are very, very bright, very well uh, tuned in, and they are that uh, these new platforms are bringing value uh, in ways that, that you know, to a, to a trad fight was mostly stagnating on the technology front. And then do I have this right that Anchor Protocol is building a bridge to Avalanche to go interchain? And if so, I wonder if there are any concerns about exploits of cross-chain bridges. And I did see that Do Kwan, the founder of Terra Luna, tweeted out that 
this week there will be perhaps some sort of announcement. Could you give us a preview? Um, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about bridges. Um, I keep saying that there's no layer ones, there's no layer twos, it's all bridges and chains. And what we're going to see in the next uh, a year at least is going to be uh, bridge wars, people who are going to come up with better and better technologies for integrating chains with bridges. So that's going to bring us much better liquidity and capital will flow, assets will flow to the chains that can accommodate them best. And this is going to be great for the space. Better liquidity and less barriers between chains is going to be good for all of us, good for consumers in general. Um, as for Doe and Luna and Avalanche, um, I, I don't want to front run my, my press team, so I will defer the announcement to the time when it's made. But uh, we are thrilled about our connection to Luna. We're thrilled about our friends there. And uh, I cannot wait to, uh, to grow the space uh, through partnerships, through, uh, through better connectivity between projects.